Hello! It's the final faction. Shouldn't do that. That's probably enough to get us a copyright complaint these days. Anyway, yes, welcome to Final Faction. They're a faction, and they're the last one of it. Yes, so this, incredibly, is an entire action figure range made and sold for and by Dollar Tree in the United States of America. Dollar Tree being basically pound land, but everything's a dollar instead of a pound. That was easy, wasn't it? Um, yeah, properly made from that, and they've launched it with its own cartoon and everything. Um, astonishing. So it's the equivalent of like a pound land action figure range. I've been wanting to get my hands on these for ages. They're totally unavailable outside of America and Canada and probably somewhere else. It probably says in the back, actually. USA, Canada. Nope, looks pretty much just like USA and Canada, actually. Certainly not available over here, but a very kindly viewer had an entire set and sent it to me and everything. And it cost 350 billion times more to send than it did to actually buy the items. But hey, let's not get into that. So what an astonishing thing. An entire bloody action figure range in this day and age where they cost one dollar each. So one dollar is about 72 pence. Except it's not quite that simple, is it? Because in America they add sales tax after on the price, so it says a dollar, but you pay more when you get to the till. But the actual world percentage sales tax is different in different states. I think some states it might even be zero, actually. So um, how do we work out how much these would be over here? Well, the way I'm going to do it, for simplicity, is I'm going to say it's 72 pence and then add 20% VAT on top. So let's say 86 pence. So this figure, with the packaging and everything, was the equivalent of 86 pence. I mean, if they did appear over here, I'm sure they'd be sold by Poundland or something, but imagine that the margins and things, these things are so bloody small that maybe it's not even financially viable to, I don't know, send them over here at all, really. I have no idea, but I do hope they reach these lands someday. Because, frankly, for the price, they're quite impressive and interesting. So, <clears throat> the leader of Final Faction is from Alpha Team 1. There's, there's only one Alpha Team at the moment. Maybe there'll be Beta Team 2 later. I don't know. Major Sergeant Steadfast. Dun, 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 dun. We'll get him out of his packaging in a minute. Here he is shouting with his red eye and his robot arm. See? All little bits of, little bits of interest. Additional weapons pack sold separately. So they're also selling little packs of extra weapons for these. For the same price, of course. The old $1. Um, but what I quite like is... It's not like, oh, well, it's a dollar each, but, you know, if you want some guns for the kids to play with with them, that's an extra dollar. No, because he still comes with a gun and a hat, so it's sort of pretty much entirely optional. I like that, particularly when the price point is so painfully low. So, what can we learn about Final Faction? Or you can cut out and keep his um, <laughs> ID card thing. Oh, dear, it's G.I. Joe all over again. So, <clears throat> there's all his meaningless bars. Origin, United States of America. Born and raised in the USA, Steadfast is the leader of Alpha Team. Highly experienced in special operations combat rescue, Steadfast lost his left arm and was gravely injured during the first Khan raid. Khan! Etc. So the villains in this are called Khan. They're weird alien things. Ah, in fact, here's the story. In the year 2050, a large asteroid collided with our moon. Rude. Among the debris, we discovered a hibernating alien mothership. Now the Khan are awake, and they want to plunder our precious natural resources. I mean, I'm assuming that the Khan were the aliens on the mothership, and not something entirely uh, not disconnected. That would be odd. So, we recruited teams of special operatives to defend Earth from the alien threat. They are the final faction. I'd have just sent the bloody army in myself, as opposed to recruiting one, two, three, four, five, six people. How did I just manage to count five as six? I think I just counted that one in my head. Steadfast exists twice. He is his own twin. Uh, so yeah, there's your story. You can go and watch the cartoon. I did have a quick look at the cartoon. It is, of course, a CGI thing. It's not great. I mean, it's a toy ad, obviously. You know, just like we had in the 80s, when nearly everything we watched on television existed entirely to sell you toys. Anyway, it lasts about eight minutes, this cartoon. Um, it actually runs to over nine with credits, so there's about eight minutes of actual action in it. Looks very video gamey, almost like it's a machinima thing. Um, the animations aren't amazing. The characters look plasticky. But I think that's done on purpose. They look more like the toys, to be honest. It seems to be more a stylistic choice. It's the toys come to life. Uh, it's very light -hearted 
Potter. It's pretty janky, to be honest. And I don't think it's done that well, because it's been up on Dollar Tree's um, magical YouTube channel for six months, and only has about 5,000 views. Uh, I'm going to assume it didn't do what they wanted, as it took four months for episode two to appear, and that lasts only 36 seconds and consists entirely of the characters playing with their own toys. So, um, yeah, I'm going to say the cartoon didn't do it, but hopefully these have been selling, because, uh, well, as we shall find out. Frankly, for the money, they are absolutely astonishing. So, we've got big grenade launchery gun thing. He's even got his own mask stroke helmet stroke hat just what you always wanted. And here he is. What was he again? Master Sergeant Steadfast. Looks a bit like an old man, frankly. <laughs> Can't really say a lot more than that. Um, detailing on these, especially for the bloody, you know, 86p or whatever, is absolutely astonishing, frankly. Oh, he's got a hole in his robot arm for attaching stuff later. You've got your standard five points of articulation. There we are, head moves around a bit as well. Holds in the back as well. A visible screw, which is always a sign of slight cheapness, but gotta say, detailing is pretty bloody good. Um, paint job, very well, it's, it's what you would expect, frankly, for 86 pence. You've got a bit of um, colour slapped on a couple of places and a bit of dry brushing around here, and you're not going to get much more than that really for the uh, paint applications of these but again 86 bloody pence what do you expect so take your giant gun in your hand which fits perfectly and his finger even goes through the trigger that's genuinely impressive uh, put your special hat on <coughs> sorry <coughs> oh bloody hell um anybody who's familiar with gi joe actually little bit steel brigade that isn't it we have to hide the robot arm from that, but there we are. So this is quite good. You, the leader figure is often the blandest one, but they've given him a robot arm for a bit of interest and a removable hat, so that's all positive, right? You sit over there, and we'll bring on another member of doo -doo 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 -doo, Alpha Team One Final Faction, Sergeant Steel. Yep. Um, well. I'll d remove this from the pack before we look at the back, but uh, it'll be fairly obvious which fictional character this is based on. Um, go on, let's, let's read it. Origin, Warm Plains of Africa. That's a little bit generic. Africa's a massive continent. Which country? Can you narrow it down a bit, at least? As a boy in Warm Plains of Africa... St oh. As, as opposed to as a boy in the Warm Plains? In the Warm Plains? Is Warm Plains of Africa a specific place name in this universe? All right, we'll give them the benefit that they don't do that. As a boy in Warm Plains of Africa, Steel dreamed of soaring like a bird. Now a highly trained air resource, Steel has... <laughs> Blimey. Steel has multiple specialised air packs for any mission. Nerves of Steel make him the team's greatest asset in the sky. That and the fact he can fly is probably quite a good thing for being the greatest asset in the sky. I love the way they just refer to him, now he's a resource. <laughs> now fully dehumanised, Steel... <laughs> Bloody hell. You're writing this for kids, guys. God. Uh, gone are the days when Larry Hammer was writing these. Cracky. Um, well, he probably still does the G.I. Joe ones, actually. Right. If you haven't guessed already, this is quite obviously based on Falcon, at least the movie uh, Marvel one that's going on at the moment. Oh well, it's mostly on television, on Disney Plus actually, isn't he? There we are. He's got wings. He's got goggles, more like ski goggles actually. Bit of silvery dry blush. A bit of silvery dry blushing. Mmm, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, a bit of dry brushing over the body. Um, he's got one funny ear, which I'm going to presume is some kind of headphone thing going on. Yeah, and he has no guns as such. I don't think. Did he? Did I miss that in there? No, I didn't. Oh, you'd have, you'd have to buy the weapon pack to give him a gun. But he's got his jetpack and can soar above the clouds and suffocate because he doesn't have any sort of oxygen. But yeah, this is quite obviously the um, non-union Mexican Anthony Mackie here, isn't it, really? <laughs> They're not hiding what this is based on. Right, you go and sit there as we look at the next member of Alpha Team. It's Specialist Shift. Specialist in what? I ain't got a bloody clue. I'm assuming Katana's looking at that. Let's have a look. Origin, Mountains of East Asia. Well, that sounds... Gen 
hang on, living in the mountains of East Asia. Right, so we are now going to assume that that was just a grammatical thing and warm plains of Africa is just a very de general description of where he came from. Living in the mountains of East Asia, Shift was groomed to be a warrior from childhood. Childhood grooming, eh? Yep, you probably should have used a different verb there. Um, I imagine they were going to say trained, but then didn't want to repeat trained here. That would be my guess for their slightly sloppy prose there. Trained in every form of combat. Every form of combat? Well, like fighting with a dead wombat? What? Shift is a force to be reckoned with. There has yet to be anyone who could challenge her skill. So she'll fuck you up right good with her bleeding swords, wouldn't she? I reckon that's what she's about. Right. If we can actually get her out of the bloody packet, we shall find out. There seems to seem to be some sword play going on. Ow. It's remarkably difficult to get the cardboard off the back of, actually. We've done it, guys. You got there in the end. Well, this is all very decent, isn't it? There she is. Face, uh, not bad. Not bad at all, actually. No dry brushing on this one. Just the basic paint applications. A thinner figure. Um, I'm going to presume these go on the back, because it's quite obvious that they do. Mm. Does it go under the hair, though? Is that actually going to work? Oh, hang on. Let's get that out of the way and see if we can push this in. Oh, I don't know. Kids are going to have a tough time with this one. I can barely get this in, actually. Yay, we did it. Kind of. No, it, we didn't. <laughs> this is not so good. Go on. Go on. Go on. Oh, well. That'll have to do. That's close. Oh, actually, he's staying in the back, and it's not going to bend the swords around like that. The swords do come out. Good. I was worried there for a second. And... One katana, two katana, slash your face, and then we've won the battle. There she is. Bloody hell, gigantic stealth katanas. Yeah, that's pretty. That's probably my favourite figure so far. Actually, I do like that one. The colour applications give it a little bit of contrast, and that uh, looks better. Bloody hell, 86p. There you go, guys. What more could you ask for? Right. The answer is, of course, Sergeant Ruck. He likes to... Duck. Yes, um, this is the heavy weapons guy, I am assuming. Let's have a look. Origin, the cold valleys of Austria. East Asia, Africa, Austria. Somebody's got a lot more specific. Ruck specialises in ground artillery. He uses heavy weapons that attach to his body to stave off the enemy. Ooh. Born in the cold valleys of Austria, yeah, we read that. Ruck has a warm, compassionate heart, but is very competitive with his friend Steel from their nightly backgammon games. Right. Oh no, a thing has flown away. Don't worry, I've nearly fa Oh god, it's gone under the tripod. Nope, we've got it, it's alright. Oh, this is odd. Oh, I think I see what, what's going on here. This is good. Again, I like the ones with a bit of contrast to the colours. Um, this is pretty cool. There's some heavy Space Age armour going on. Don't massively like the big holes to stick some sort of pegged weapon in, but there we are. That is his thing, isn't it? He? he does uh, apparently put weapons on his armour or whatever. So I'm going to assume this just goes on the back. That appeared to be a correct assumption. Now where does this... Oh! Okay. There he is. He's got one eye covered by a thing, but that allows his virtual reality targeting or something. Oh, that's pretty nifty, does that? Yeah, yeah. And he can wander around with it, pointing up in the air to shoot any passing birds. And then go down and kill you and your grandma. Marvellous. That's pretty good there, figure. Bloody hell, I can't believe what you get for the money, frankly. It is genuinely astonishing. Right, actually, these can go to the back. And we shall move these across more into the centre as we bring in the final member of Alpha Team 1. Well, I say the final member. In the cartoon, they've got, like, a dog, which has a robot dog suit, <laughs> which is a bit odd. I imagine if they ever do a Series 2, and frankly, I hope they do off the back of this, um, it will be in that. So no weapons for this one. You do need your weapons pack, kind of. Probably, because this, well, involves a lot more plastic than the other ones, because it's a big, chunky bugger. A-C-R-M, or a Kerm, as we'll be calling him. That sounds ridiculous. Let's call him Bobby. Hello, Bobby. Hello. Right. Big old chunky arms and legs. Legs much bigger than the torso here. Well, he's a sort of robot, so he can be whatever shape he likes, but that's a little bit manga, sort of anime-inspired. Pretty good. Right. Let's see what we've got on the back. 
doesn't come from anywhere because he's a robot. The ACRM is a breakthrough in virtual reality tech. D does he exist? Do you, do, is he, do you have to look through your phone to see him? Is he an NFT? Uh, a helmet and special suit allows piloting of the mech via a modular system. Oh, I see. So somebody has the virtual reality set up somewhere. And that enables them to remotely pilot the ACRM. OK, then. This mech is adaptable and aids in all combat and rescue missions. The ACRM is currently piloted by Boyd. Oh, nearly Billy. A 15-year-old disabled boy. 15-year-old seems a bit young for somebody you would pick to save the world. <laughs> You'd probably give somebody a bit older experience. Well, he's in there because it, it's for the kids, isn't it? And it's more of a sort of audience surrogate, isn't it? Like Robin for Batman, that kind of thing. Well, well, Billy. No, we called him Bobby, didn't we? I've forgotten. Well, you're Bobby now, either way. Um, yeah, big chunky thing. Yeah, it feels pretty solid in the hand as well, considering the price. That is astonishing. OK, you sit down there as it is time to look at the almighty weapons packs. Weapon pack one, heavy arms, heavy arms. If you do suffer from heavy arms, be careful, you may be having a stroke. Um, so this pack works with all Alpha Team characters, so all of these can use whatever weapons these are. And these are quite obviously big shooty bang bang guns. State of the art bang bang, as Clarence Boddicker would say if he was here. Right. Uh, can we remove this? Is there a Cobra Assault Cannon inside? Come on, I need to know. We've got... Oh, hang on. Oh, it actually explains them all on the back. Bloody hell. Right, Sky Flower. I'm going to assume some sort of rocket. Rocket launcher shoots exploding missiles that heat seek and send up a different coloured cloud based on what it has hit. That is very weird. High accuracy, high damage, low stealth. Yeah, it doesn't look something stealthy. Plus, if it explodes in different colours, it's probably a firework. Rabid Wolf. Was that an M60 or something, that one? Assault rifle. Fires a large numbers of small lasers at a high rate of speed. <laughs> Have you got any lasers? Oh, I'm sorry, I've only got small ones. <laughs> Fires small lasers. That's not a laser gun, guys. That That is very much not a laser gun. Angry Ape. Best name for a fucking gun ever. Grenade launcher. Lobs explosives with great accuracy and high damage. Angry Ape. The rail gun. Oh, it's a super sci-fi one. Like in that Schwarzenegger film. Junior. Uh, shoots lasers with high accuracy, damage, and stealth. Yep, nothing stealthier than a highly damaging laser. And finally, the Tattooist. <laughs> These names are brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Oh, I was going to take the angry ape out, but uh, somebody had taken it already, so I had to make do with a Tattooist. Gatling gun shoots large numbers of small lasers from a rotating barrel muzzle. Low accuracy with a high damage rates. We really do have that G.I. Joe cartoon thing going on here, of them obviously having real guns, but they all shoot lasers, honest. Right, uh, you are going to need some sort of gun. What can you shoot up in the sky? Probably a rabid wolf. Oh, no, this was the angry ape, wasn't it? You look like a man who needs an angry ape. Actually, that's probably so heavy, it'll unbalance him during flight. We'll give you something smaller later. It'll be fine. Uh, you've already got a massive gun. You're fine. She's got those. She's fine. Or oh, we can give the mech guy something. If anybody ever needed... Oh, no, no! Oh, well, it said these work with all Alpha Team, but no, there's, there's nothing fitting in there. These hands do not grip, and these don't have pegs on to attach to anything. The packaging told us lies. Naughty, naughty. Well, you've definitely, definitely got to have the tattooist. I mean, that is a no-brainer. There we are. And you can have... Uh, this thing as well. You can have all the guns, because that is what you do, according to the back of your card. Marvellous. The guns fit in the hands really well. These are nice, solid plastic. Um, less rubbery than most modern figures, actually, but not brittle. They're about right. Just really good all round. Astonishing for the money. We keep saying it, but it's still true. Right, so next up, Covert Ops. Pack works with all Alpha Team characters. What the bloody hell is that? Floaty... Oh, it's not a drone, is it? Let me hang on. Owl Eyes provides night, heat, UV, and infrared vision. I'm assuming that's the hat. Phoenix Pack, is that the little jetpack? Allows user to hover, increase speed with boost, and rise into the air up to 40 feet. 
Unfortunately, you'll break your legs when you fall down again, but let's not think about that. SPRG, self-propelling and retracting grappling gun. Nice. Useful for attaining high ground against Anakin Skywalker and pulling enemies close. Dawn and Dusk. Oh, nice. Right, that, well, that's obviously the grappling gun. So the little guns here are Dawn and Dusk. Handguns with high rate of fire. Accurate, close and mid-range. Limited ammo charge. Lion Fang, short sword, useful for close combat fights, also good for intimidation. You call that a knife? This is a Lion Fang. Stratus Board, hovers up to 40 feet above ground or water, reaches speeds up to 30 miles per hour, reminds you of Back to the Future 2. And Dragon Drone, Dragon, uh, can sight and attack remotely, good for recon, ambushes, and murdering people without getting your hands dirty. Tremendous. Right, what have we got here then? Uh. Open. Curse you. Right. I'm just going to pour everything out, I think. Bloody hell, some stuff here. So there's your floaty, floaty board thing. Uh, here we are. It looks like you would be incredibly slow on your own, so by attaching the old pegs to the holes in the feet that I can't quite make out... Uh, hang on. Can we get this one on? Yes. There we are. Now Ruck can go super speed. And look faintly ridiculous. Good for you, Biff. Right, uh, can we get the Knight Covert Helmet on this figure? No, we, we can't. Our head gets in the way of that. All right, then. Don't worry. You can control the drone. That's just horrible, really, isn't it? Right, you can have the jetpack, though. No, you can't, because I've stuck the other thing. Look, just go over there. You're fine with your bendy katanas. Everything will be fine. Now, not Anthony Mackie. What can you have? You, you, This is where you would have the two small handguns, isn't it? There we are. Get that on there. And mm, that's the grappling one, isn't it? That on there. Tremendous. I um, don't know what else we've got, really. Um, There's an annoying piece of paper that keeps sticking to my arm. I'm going to move that like I should have done earlier. Uh, grappling gun. Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, no bit of string or anything, but plenty, plenty good enough. And horrible intimidation knife. <laughs> Fair enough. So does Stealth Hat go on this character? Not really, no. I think this hat is designed for... Dun -dun 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 -dun, old Steadfast here. There you go, mate. No, it's too big for him as well. Who the hell does this hat fit? So it's too big for him. It's too small for her. Uh, surely it can't go on Ruck. It's, it's Good God, it fits him the best, but it still falls off. That's weird. You've got a hat that doesn't fit anybody. Don't really understand that, but... Uh, there we are. That can go in, well, the bin, frankly. And finally, Mech Weapons Pack Air Assault. Pack works with all mech characters. So, just him, basically. And maybe Ruck's boots, actually. Let's have a think on this. So, mm, oh, I get it. This enables your mech to fly and look more anime. Arm Cannons provides firepower capability to mechs, giving the ability to inflict long-range damage to enemies. Cool. Back Booster, jetpack that gives a mech short-range jumping capabilities and increased maneuverability. Can be combined with wings to allow short-range flight. Bloody hell. Leg Booster, boosts mech speed on the ground as well as increases jumping ability. When combined with the Back Booster, Leg Booster can provide additional propulsion, increasing mech flight duration and distance. Wings provides flight capability to a mech when combined with the back booster. Alone, the wings give a mech the ability to glide from high drop zones. This thing's going to fall out of the sky like a bloody rock, isn't it? But never mind, that's not for us to worry about. Come on then, Bobby. What have we got for you? Hmm. I think all of these are going to attach here, actually, by the looks of it. So obviously these go on the back. That kind of goes without saying, doesn't it? Can't seem to attach them very well. <coughs> oh, God. Oh, bloody hell. It's like worried about breaking the plastic there. No, no, they've gone in. I think the kids might have trouble with that one, but there we are. Yep, they're on. Ooh, looking pretty gun, Danny. Uh, we now need... These things presumably go on the arms here. Although, in theory, you could also attach them there. But they wouldn't look as good. So we shall stick with them going on here. These things, these little booster bits, I presume these go on the back here? 
Yeah, that makes the most sense, doesn't it? Sort of a bit of an Iron Man boostery thing. And the oh <laughs> no! Right, out you come. Oh, no wonder it didn't fit properly. It's not designed to. This is supposed to go in those, look. Ah, so where do these go? I'm going to guess on the shoulders here. Oh yeah, that looks the part. Down with that. And there we are. That does actually look a lot cooler, I've got to say, but it has doubled the price. So it's now £1.72 or something rather than 86 pence. That, uh, yeah can't really complain with that very nifty so you've got giant bloody mech in the sky shooting things with his arm wrist lasery stuffs also in the sky you've got this guy shooting down and nipping around everywhere you've got him on his super skate surfboard flying thing shooting an incredible amount of bullets in every bloody direction you've got her sneaking up behind you and cutting your head off just when you don't expect it and this guy is shouting orders that nobody can understand because of his bloody hat. <laughs> well, good work, everyone. Good work. Steadfast. Ruck. Shift. Steel. And Bobby. Can you fly, Bobby? Well, you can now. You've got, like, jetpacks and stuff. So that's all bloody good, isn't it? I mean, frankly, for the money, astonishing. Absolutely astonishing. And we ain't done yet. These were just the good guys. For now, we must introduce... The Eviltons. The Khan. Ooh, looking like a big rock-faced misery guts there. With a very weird gun. Looking a bit Halo-y, actually. So this is a Hive-class drone. Not to be confused with a High-class drone. Oh, good afternoon. Just going to invade your planet. I do hope that's all right, darling. <laughs> um, so, the Khan drone class is a basic grunt... Okay, used for combat and labour operations. Not highly intelligent, but more intelligent than a brute. Ooh, that's one of the other ones. And able to accomplish moderate mission tasks, like putting together IKEA furniture or building Lego. They can occasionally guide a brute to a target of interest. Go on. Go on, brutey. Go, go, go on. Blow that thing up. Go on. Good brute. Right, let's see what these look like then. This looks like a very simple paint job on these, to say the least. And I don't think I'm wrong. Nope. That really is a bit of silver on some purple plastic, but kind of gives the alien vibe. And the fact that they're still pretty highly detailed, like the old uh, Alpha Team one there themselves, yeah, that's pretty good. That is pretty good. So I'm going to presume this just goes in their hand like that. Their weird three-fingered hands. Brr. Brr. And other noises. This looks like a Fisher-Price coloured space train. Or the front of it, at least. Just thought I'd share that with you. <clears throat> right. He's got two red eyes. Slightly skull face, yeah. We're getting the alien villain vibes. I enjoy it. I enjoy it a lot. That's good. But is it as good as... <coughs> the Brute. Brr. Now, this is a massive bit of plastic, like the mech, but it does come with its own large gun. So I don't know what's going on there. I mean, just about to make out the face on the side. Right, what can we learn about the Brute? Huge strength and durability, apparently. Right, uh, the Khan Brute class specialises in power and destruction. They are very low intelligence and are controlled by a commander. But we don't seem to have a commander, unless that's the Synthoid coming up next. Tank weapons are not able to penetrate a brute skin. What? Its skin can withstand direct fire from a tank? Bloody hell. It is usually a team effort to bring these beasts down. M multiple tanks? <laughs> what? That sounds crazy. Right. Go on then. Let's see how brute Bruticus here is. Uh, uh... Chuck that over to one side, or it's going to cover everything up. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh ho ho. That is a chunky bugger. That is that is a very thick boy. Blimey. Um, I'm going to assume this is some sort of horrifying assault weapon it carries with it. Oh, the, oh, the fingers are quite stiff on this. I'm not sure that's going to go in actually. Oh no, it's done it. It's done it. Oh look at that. Looks like I can take a tank out just with... When I say that, what does this fire? It doesn't have any sort of um, front to it. Looks like a giant needler from Halo, doesn't it? 
Well, yep, uh, let's get old Steadfast in for size. Yeah, that is a big thing. Gonna be honest, it doesn't look like something which would withstand tank blasts to me, but it is a heavy blighter, and it's got an old man's face with mandibles. Eee, how you doing down there? Hmm, like it. Yes, they definitely look like part of the same group, but yeah. Brute an awful lot bigger. Actually, how does that stand? Next to Steadfast. Oh, about the same. Yeah, okay, that does make sense. Marvellous. Right, we're liking the Brute. And finally, Synthoid. What the bloody hell is this thing? Proper alien weirdness. Like it. The Khan have very advanced technology that are, autonom blah, blah, blah. that are autonomous, have a synthetic biology, and are highly intelligent. Synthoids are used in all Khan operations, similar to the final faction ACRM. Oh, and they are not to be underestimated. Interchangeable arms are compatible with Synthoid weapons packs. Interchangeable arms. Ooh, okay. So, basically... This is the mech equivalent, right? And yeah, it's got one arm with a hand and one that's just like a weird sickle thing. And it's got a jet engine in its guts. <laughs> Don't quite understand that, apparently how it works. And many eyes for seeing all the colors of the rainbow. Right, uh, yeah, legs. Not got as much articulation on this one, just got the four points. But it's interesting, I enjoy the weird alien design. I wish there was a bit of colour or some sort of shading on the legs and arms, maybe. But the body's interesting enough. Ooh, and two big holes in the back for some sort of horrifying backpack thing. Interesting. Very interesting. I enjoy the design. It looks like a spare part come to life. <laughs> right. There's your crew, but where are their special weapons? For there are three weapons packs for these blighters as well. Presenting repen weapons pack numero uno, shark arms. Pack works with all Khan humanoid characters. Right, well, you're going to go up the side then, because you are very much not humanoid. Well, you're close, but not close enough. Uh, if we can actually open it. Ugh, yes. There we go. Oh, some very Halo-looking weapons in here, actually. Do they have explanations on the back? They bloody do. The Burrower shoots bio-blasts that cling and burrow into an enemy attacking nerve clusters. Juice, that's horrible. Core Blaster. Sounds like some sort of, I don't know, YouTube playlist full of um, keep fit sessions. Energy gathers in the core, then shoots a ball of energy that explodes on contact. Ah, in, in the process of doing that, by the looks of it, look. Uh, high damage, low accuracy, high damage radius, and Zapper! Shoots an energy ball that jumps from one enemy to another, getting stronger as it goes. How the hell does that work? I don't know. Um, these look a bit big for him, to be honest with you. Maybe you could, maybe could you hold that? Yeah, kind of. I can't believe he could fire it with one arm, but that's kind of going on. Uh, here, go on then, you can have... Actually, you should have the giant lethal thing here, really, shouldn't you? I don't know which way round it goes. The answer is that way, I have decided. Pretty sure it should have been the other way, but that'll do. <clears throat> now, can actually the Synthoid carry something? Yeah, he kind of can, actually. Yeah, look! He can, it says it was only for the humanoid ones. Well, maybe this is a humanoid one then, because that fits pretty bloody good. He's firing it off at a weird angle, but good enough, right? Next up, <laughs> weapons pack, quake arms, as opposed to unreal tournament arms. Right, what have we got? The grabber shoots a piercing projectile that hooks into an enemy. Then the weapon pulls them close and gives them a lovely kiss. Acid Spitter attaches to back and shoots short-range acid blasts onto enemies. Lovely. The acid can destroy any non-biological material. How does the acid know? That's weird. And Spike Launcher, or Mr. Launcher to people who don't know him, attaches to back and shoots short-range spike-like projectiles. OK. These are all humanoid characters again, apparently. Have you come? So that's pretty much just a standard gun and a couple of funny backpacks, really. I'm down with that. Um, that looks like something that should maybe go on this one. Oh, yeah. If I can fit it in there. These are not good, the backpacks going in the holes, but we've got there. Oh, it's like a weird bug, beetly thing. 
and sits on the back with its R. It is a biological weapon, but not in the sense of like a gas or something, in the sense of something that's alive, I think. That's good. That's actually improved the design. I like that a lot. Now, this bloke can have this here. Rup, 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 rup. Oh, yeah. Now he's got a crazy turret on his noggin, just like Mother always said he would. And he was actually voted boy most likely to have a giant weird turret on his back in the yearbook at his freakish alien university. So, you know, swings and roundabouts, isn't it? And then there's this pistol. Well, your other gun's full now your hand, you can have this one. Great. Does he have a backpack hole? No. He has weird specific holes, okay? Which I'm going to assume come from Weapons Pack Synthoid. Pack works with all Khan Synthoid only. Synthoid only. So this is replacement arms and stuff. Um, what have we got? Battle arms, okay. Energy based shoulder mounted cannons. I think we've found what the holes are for. That increase the Synthoid long range attack capabilities. Auto targets biological enemies. High accuracy, high damage. Trap arm gives Synthoid additional dexterity. It's just got a hand on it, hasn't it? Increasing ability to grab and hold enemies. And needle arm. Ugh. Close range combat attachment gives Synthoid the ability to inject nerve toxins into enemies, temporarily rendering them immobile. If there's something you don't want to be injected with, generally nerve toxins are quite high up the list. Right, go on Synthoid. Let's make you a force to be reckoned with. One of those. Let me get that in a bit further, I think, actually. Yep, yeah, there we are. One of those, even moulded out the same plastic. I feel like we are completing the Synthoid here, I must say. Yeah. Yeah, looks much better with those on, doesn't it? Oh, and there's another arm. Okay, so... Uh, right, uh, I think what I'm going to do... We'll move that arm. Plop that one in. There we are. He's now got one grabby arm and one weird needle arm. And there's another spare arm if he wants it. And another weird arm there, if he does want it. What was the other thing? No, it was just two arms and that, wasn't it? Pretty good, though. Old turbine face. Some serious stuff going on now. Absolutely marvellous. Well, there we are. Those are the bad guys. In the background, we still have the good guys. That is all there is for Final Faction. No, it's still a bloody lot of it, though. And if you were to buy everything seen here, plus the rest of the spare guns I've got off to the side there, the whole lot... Well, £9.36, and as we're adding on the tax, that would be £11.23 for the bloody lot. Let's put that into perspective. Look, it's Soccer Mom Leia. So this is a re-released vintage Star Wars figure they're selling again, obviously, with really, really rubbery plastic this time. Really? Weird. Um, these are £10 each. £10 each. So is this Marvel figure. Uh, a retro-styled one of old Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. £10 again. And, you know, let's be honest here. This is much nicer, you know. The detailing is... Well, the detailing's about just as good, but this is more solid, and the paint is far, far better. But this is £10. And all of this was £11.23, effectively, so... Bloody hell! I mean, do you, what, what do the kids want to play with? This entire set or one soccer mob layer? It's, yeah, it's so cheap, it's bloody unbelievable. Now, I was trying to find, like, an equivalent cheap figure like these. Let's get old Ruck out again. Uh, and the best I could come up with was this colonial marine figure from Lanard's Weird Aliens range they've been doing recently. I think it's just a chap my figure, to be perfectly honest with you. Notice the similar construction there. Well, extra screw. This is like the sort of cheapest figure I could find to put up against these cheapy ones, but this is nowhere near as good as it. The, the detailing is nowhere near as good. The paint is similar, except they haven't gone with any dry brushing. And despite apparently being a colonial marine from the Aliens continuity, he's got a cyber pickaxe, which I presume is because they've got them in Fortnite so all the kids know what they are or something, but just not comparable at all. I, I mean, I think these are amazing. For the money, you cannot complain in the bloody slightest. Absolutely astonishing. Now, I will say one thing. Whilst looking into these, I was trying to find something that would be of a similar value, or a, of a similar value proposition in the UK. 
I think I found something, right? So, going back to Lanard, they've made for years these figures called The Core. They used to be very G.I. Joey, and now they're sort of a bit cheaper designed. But you can get a pack that contains ten of these Core figures, an ATV, a bike, and a weird robotic dog, and the whole lot is 20 quid. And the figures are noticeably better. They've got many more points of articulation. Um, you've got, you know, moving knees and moving shoulders and moving elbows and all that kind of stuff. And the paint apps are obviously a lot better as well. So I think, you know, if you do want a load of good guys and bad guys and some vehicles and bits cheap to amuse the kids, that is what I would say to get. I could only find Smith's Toys having them in stock, but that doesn't mean they aren't other places. Your independent ones might have them as well. But that was the closest I could get, because we cannot get these bloody things over here. And I've got to say, tip top, well done Dollar Tree. You've won this prize. <laughs>